Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, this is Colin, again with Lockdown Movie Reviews. I just wanted to let you know here, I've been reviewing a whole lot of stuff, and I just have to say, there are some great, great movies. If I could say that there was Oscars all around, I really would. But let's just break it down for you how it is. I'm going to be telling you right now, honestly, about Spider-Man, No Way Home. While this actually embodies... A whole lot of everything in Spider-Man. There's the villains that you all remember. There's the new version of Spider-Man in the Marvel Universe where there's so many superheroes and everything else. And how everything seems so wonderful. And it's like, how do we keep getting all these Spider-Men that are always in high school or at the first of college? Okay. Well, it kind of says how. There's the multiverse. And... I have to agree that it is probably one of the greatest entries into what is a lot of Oriental thought and everything else with how there's so many different dimensions and we're all connected. And yes, there are movies that are coming out to do deal with that and everything, including the movie One, which was actually probably the best thing for Nazis and everything else. But let me just say, this movie doesn't over-science you. It has love, interest, real choices, and compassion throughout it. It has rehabilitation of people that you would think are beyond rehabilitation. This actually reaches across everything. It even comes back, and yes, it does work in it, if you're familiar with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and it is absolutely wonderful. And honestly, it's a good way for a movie, if you needed to jump into it, to understand it from basically Spider-Man outward. So if you've missed all the other Marvel movies beforehand, you will be able to pick it up going, oh, I, well, you know, I started in the middle. I watched uh, Return of the Jedi in the 80s. I didn't see the other two or something else. But if you see the other two and you see the two after, you understand what happens in Star Wars after that, and you can expand and go on if you want to or not. In and of itself, I think the cinematography was wonderful and used the perfect amount of close-ups, the perfect amount of interaction in sceneries and everywhere, and showed the personal connection. And then at the end of it, when no one knew who he was, and I'm sorry, this is a spoiler, um... It showed every bit of that. And in a way, it showed depth of everything. And then there's the twist at the end that, you know, might erase this spoiler. But just in saying, all the things that we learned about and everything else and the choices that we make, and like in living in a world where no one really knew you, it does happen. And how much of a curse it is. And then, in of itself, do you merge all the worlds together, and you become the only one there. Now, in this, I will say this is some storytelling that has some in-depth uh, stuff. So, um, not trying to sound like the high school teacher, but in and of itself, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, who seems to be the poorest Spider-Man out there, he uh, can't make his own web refills and everything. And it's like, oh my God, you have like a mutant, uh, you know, system right there or um, different cells or something. And he works it out with MJ and everything. And in a way, they say the meek will inherit the earth. He'll have a kid with MJ in that universe and everything else. Wow. Interesting. What really happened? Um... Well, honestly, in my perspective, it's talking about the lower class of people. And while Jamie Foxx has a wonderful line in it going, I just thought you'd be black. There has to be a black Spider-Man out there. Major foreshadowing and everything. And in the multiverse, this pulls everything together later on. That's why it's like this is almost like just a third of a movie, honestly with this one and why I think it's such a pivotal Marvel movie. And then Garfield, 
is a struggling person getting through college and represents the middle class of America. And in and of this, this simulates him going and being with uh, Gwen and moving over into the high-rise dinners and trying to be there and be the perfect person and hide Spider-Man and everything. Where in the current universe, with the current Spider-Man, he's dating interracially, has interracial friends. No one's really saying anything. He's basically interracial. And no one looks at anything. And it is kind of like, and in, he even mentions it in the movie, our technology is very evolved, so I think I can help all of you all out. And he's like this benevolent Spider-Man that in a way is like a philanthropist. He has all the technology, all of the high-end, top, upper 1%, and he's a good guy, even though it's like he's really kind of the uh, poorer version of the upper 1%. And he's helping out everybody. He, ch he saves them all, everything else. Um, he's able to send them back to their times, and they all get to live out their lives nice and normally. And in a way, it's like there's always a way to work things out. And the other Spider-Men are kind of like they're with him, but, you know, you can definitely tell one of them's lower class and everything and has the lower class problems and stuff. Another one's in the middle class and it has that middle class melancholy of everything. With There's just something that I should be doing, but I can't figure out what it is to make that next step to where I can be like the current Spider-Man, can benefit and make everything so much more better. And really is kind of removed from all of it with the helplessness that the other ones all experience and move through. And then with it, in this, he's thrust from the multiverse having to complete this wish that he did with uh, Doctor Strange to being totally disconnected and lowered even lower than Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. And he has all these plans to bring it back and everything else. And just like a true philanthropist at the top part of society, he gives up all of it for the benefit of his friends and loved ones so that they will never be hurt or in danger again from him and his identity. And I have to say that he shows this, and I mean, he changes throughout the movie. His facial expressions, his everything. <coughs> Excuse me. I've even seen his eyes in it kind of change and do kind of the brooding Batman in it in the last few scenes. And that's why I think, and yes, he's a young actor, he has a lot to go with, and he has more than even Spider-Man. And I will say that the lead Spider-Man there, he does have to have just so much, there's so much talent. I want to say he could be nominated for Best Actor in it and be probably the first one for a superhero situation. Although I think they're just going to say he's a little too young. And the Jamie Foxx comment will be bringing in the other Spider-Man to where you have this line and then there's this encompassing situation from basically the black Hispanic community that the black Spider-Man really does show and bring in. And in and of itself, he kind of moves like Daredevil whenever they're going to make the movie is he comes from the bottom and can move all the way up and associates with the top to the bottom and doesn't have the disconjointedness of basically everything in, um, let's just say, it, the white community for like how they say white Spider-Man is. And then as the multiverse continues on, you have two or three other Spider-Men or Spider-Women to come into play. And then it shows a complete working parts of the system. And while it does deal incredibly deeply 
with racial issues, and if you know the Spider-Man comic books and the stuff beside it, it actually shows it in a way that people really see how each section of races are basically separated out, able to socialize with each other, and yet at the same time work and don't really do things because of racial situations. And in a way, it's kind of a perfect world, even if it's imperfect with the natural situation of villains and superheroes. That's everything over Spider-Man, No Way Home. Um, I have to say I give it right up there as close as I can to 10 stars, or however it is, uh, with it all. And, well, there's a whole lot of more movies out there. It's Colin Dawson, Lockdown Movie Reviews. Like and subscribe.